Hey guys, it's Jess <laughs> and I'm back with another video. You just clicked on it and it's your lucky day because I am speaking a little sermon of advice. Um, long story short, I got asked about a month ago to speak a little sermon at a little connect group with about 20 to 30 people and it was awesome. It was the scariest thing I've ever done. I'm very proud of myself for doing it, but I really felt like God wanted me to put it on YouTube. So. I'm here today to bring you a little bit of the word, a little bit of a sermon, and yeah, if you would subscribe, like, comment, that would make my day, and I just really appreciate you guys being here. You are loved, you are worthy, you are enough, and I'm just gonna head right in to my sermon. Okay, if you see my eyes going this way, my, la my laptop is right there, I did not memorize this. Pastor Jesse <laughs> is a lot. Hi guys, my name is Jesse. I am 20 years old and I get the honor of speaking tonight for you guys. Um, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about myself before I get started. So I was raised in a Christian household, but I didn't necessarily take my faith seriously until I was about 20 years old, or sorry, until I was about 18 years old which is when I decided to move to Sydney, Australia and attend Hillsong College. There, I did dance stream for a year. I did online pastoral stream and it was amazing. And then right now I'm in open studies at university. Not exactly sure what I wanna do, but that's okay. Um, I am a full-time youth leader at Celebration Church at Risen Youth. Plug their little YouTube down below, subscribe and yeah. I am so grateful for my church community here. But we're gonna hop in and talk about today's topic. The title of my message is Facing Your Fears. I was gonna buy my microphone. Also, Glycomed is the best lotion in the world. Um, I'm not sponsored, but I will gladly be a sponsor. <laughs> I literally have Glycomed, Glycomed, Glycomed. 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 Um, sponsor me, please. Number one supporter right here. Okay. Um, back to Jesus. So the title of my message is Facing Your Fears. What are you afraid of? And no, I don't mean like being afraid of spiders in the dark, which I am afraid of spiders. Don't move to Australia. I mean, like, what are you afraid of deep down doing and failing at? The fear you're afraid to even tell others. I guess you could call it, like, what dream do you fear? We all have something we don't want to admit to others. Something that we are afraid to tell because we are afraid to fail at it. And simply what I am doing right now is something that I'm terrified of. When I got asked to do this, I instantly thought to myself, no. I am not good enough, I am not a good speaker, and I just feel like it's not my thing. I went home that night and I couldn't stop thinking about fear. And I was trying to fall asleep, but God kept saying, fear, 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 fear. And I was like, yes, I know I'm afraid. But then he was like, no, no, no. Yeah, you're afraid, but I want you to speak on it. And I was like, <laughs> no, you're done. But I'm doing that today. I know I get read and I stumble over my words and I'm not the most articulate with my words, but that is exactly what the enemy wants you to believe. He wants me to believe that I'm not capable, that I am not enough, that I'm not worthy and that I can't do it. Now you may have connected to some of the things I mentioned or you have similar fears. So I guess I'm here to break down the fear behind your dreams and your desires and to hopefully help each of us become a little more vulnerable and to take back the hold the devil has on us. I want to replace that with nothing else but the living word. Point one. So the title of the message was facing your fears and point one is titled fleeing your fears. Why is fleeing different from running? Well, 
When you are fleeing, you are running away from something and running towards something else. We need to run away from the labels that we have placed on ourselves and run towards nothing else but the living word. So are you going to run away from the lies and towards God's word? Or are you going to run away from the lies and accept the lies? Accept the lies the devil has placed over you. Let's open up our Bibles to Judges or your phones or whatever you have. And we will be following the story of Gideon. So Gideon in the Bible was someone who didn't really believe in himself. He was pretty similar to us. He was a farmer. He knew his weaknesses and he knew that he was the least in his clan. He was a person. In Judges 6, 14 to 15, it says, The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon asked, replied, sorry. But how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my family. Gideon instantly questions God's faith in him. He took on the identity of being the weakest and the least in his family. And unfortunately, our generation takes on labels quite easily. Whether it's anxiety, depression, being an introvert, being a female, being seen as weak. We allow these words to define who we are and how we view ourselves. So I want to start here. I want to start with the root of the problem. I want to start with the lies we've accepted onto ourselves and to run away from them and then run towards the way God defines us. I had to do this in order to speak. I decided to run away from the lies that I'm not capable of speaking and I had to decide that I was going to run toward what God says about me, not what the enemy defined me as. So we're going to move on to point number two. Point two. So one, we have fled our fear. So we're running away from something. We're running towards something else, right? We're making sure that the lies aren't getting up to us. Number two is fixing your fears. If you fix your fears, sorry, pardon me. If you fix your eyes, this can help you to not look back and to look into God's eyes. So now that we have fled from our fears, we need to build our trust and our faith. This trust is built through fixing your eyes on God and seeing yourself the way he sees you. So, you know when you're about to do something scary and you look into your friend's eyes, you're standing with them and you're like, okay, we're about to do this, right? And you're looking into your eyes and you're trying to gauge if they're going to do it, if they're going to jump, if they're going to fall, if they're going to do it with you and you're trusting that and you're going to do it together. Your heart races a bit faster, but you can see the confidence they have in you. We need to find that in God's eyes. In Gideon's story, he grew faith by testing God. Judges 6, 36 to 38. Gideon said to God, if you will save Israel by my hand as you have promised, look, I will place a wool fleece on the threshing floor. If there is dew only on the fleece and all the ground is dry, then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand, you said, as you said. And that is what happened. Gideon rose early the next day. He squeezed a fleece and wrung out the dew, a bowl full of water. God knew before even anointing Gideon that Gideon was going to need some extra reassurance. God even knew that he would not test him once, but twice. Judges 6, 39 to 40. Then Gideon said to God, Do not be angry with me. Let me make just one more request. Allow me one more test of the fleece. But this time, make the fleece dry and let the ground be dew, be covered with dew. Sorry. That night, God did so. Only the fleece was dry and all the ground was covered with dew. God had patience with Gideon. He didn't pressure him or rush him. God knew Gideon needed time to build up his confidence. He let him grow while never leaving his side. And that is exactly what we have to remind ourselves. This won't be easy, but God already knew that. He already knows that. 
by Gideon building that faith and the trust in himself, it slowly ripped the devil's grip off of him. But may I encourage you that God knows you can't do it because he knows only you can do it through him? Why would he pick someone who is already capable? God needed to have an impossible scenario in order to show that it was not man's strength, but it was God's. Your fears should seem impossible. God wants to show the world what he can do and not what we can do. You may ask yourself though, why me? He chooses you because he knows you can't do it. He knows that you need him to do it. He didn't choose you because he knew you were ready. He picked you because you were anointed. You won't be ready for what God calls you to do. And it's okay. It's okay to doubt yourself. But it's not okay to sit in that doubt and accept it and to leave it leave you stagnant. God wants to use our inability to show his ability. Whoo, that was good. Come on. Can I get amen? Overcoming your fears is not about you. It's about God working through you. Just as I have said yes to speaking tonight and overcoming my fear and fixing my eyes on how God sees me, I know you can do it as well. <laughs> Point number three. So one, we have fled our fears. We're running away from our fear. That's just chilling over here, right? And then point number two was fixing your eyes. We fixed our eyes. And now we're gonna fight your fears. First, I'm gonna get a little sippy sippy. Point one, leaning your fears. Point two, fix your eyes. Point three, fighting your fears. You will need to fight the enemy in order to fight your fears. The devil sees potential in you and sees your weaknesses. He wants to use that against you. But will you choose to see your weaknesses as God's own strength through you? So back to Gideon. God gave Gideon specific instructions on how he was supposed to fight. We also want to face our fears, but do we know how? No, but that's okay because God does. And that is exactly why we need to be obedient. You know when God tells you to do something and it kind of scares you and you don't really want to do it, but you know if you don't, you're going to regret it? That is most likely a test of your obedience. If you aren't diligent in the small things, why would God give you the big things? I have a little story to tell. So when I attended Hillsong College, God tested my obedience. So Hillsong College is like right here and then across the street, like there's a busy road is like a Kohl's, I think, or a Kmart and you get groceries there. Um, and it was a like really hot day. It was like 40 degrees, which is not normal for me. I'm a Canadian and I had like a 15 minute break between classes and I really wanted a popsicle. So this is little Jessie with her backpack on. I'm walking over. Little Jesse means like two years ago. I'm walking over to Coles and I grab my popsicle and I'm walking out and setting the scene. So there's an old lady who has like this little table to the entrance of the grocery store and she has like trinkets and she sells them and she's deaf. And I see her almost every time I go into the store. So I grab my popsicle, right? I'm opening it up. I'm about to lick it and God says, go offer her one. I literally stop dead in my tracks and I'm like, oh my gosh. There's so many people around. God, you want me to offer this deaf lady a popsicle right now in front of everyone? Like, she can't even hear me. Like, I don't, I don't even know. And God just like, he was like, hey, just do it. So, walk over to this lady. And I kneel down gently to her and I tap her on the shoulder and I say, well, I don't say anything. I think I did say anything, but she couldn't hear me. But I offered her the popsicle. Um, I have, it wasn't the open one, don't worry. And she shook her head no at me. And I was like, what? I was so embarrassed I got up and I kind of sulked and walked back over to college.
I was so mad at God. I was like, why did you even make me do that when you knew her answer? He simply said I was testing your obedience. That shut me up real quick. I even went on to share the popsicles with my classmates. I truly believe that God was preparing my heart to share with them through this lady. Um, as small as that may seem, God always has a bigger meaning behind his obedience and his small tasks. But you have to choose to be obedient. Gideon was obedient even though he didn't, didn't understand. In Judges 7, 2 to 3, the Lord said to Gideon, you have too many men. I cannot deliver Midian into their hands, or Israel would boast against me. My own strength has saved me. Now announce to the army, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left and 10,000 remained. Gideon was obedient, not once, but multiple times, and we need to be as well. In Judges 7, 5 to 6, so Gideon took the men down to the water. There the Lord told them, told him, sorry, separate those who lap the water with their tongues as dogs lap from those who kneel down to drink. 300 of them drank from cupped hands, lapping like dogs. All the rest got down on their knees to drink. Each guy, each, <laughs> each time Gideon, whew, let's try that again. Each time God spoke to Gideon, he listened. And in the end, it paid off. Gideon was able to win this battle because God had a plan and Gideon obeyed it. Gideon could not necessarily see the light at the end of the tunnel, but he saw the small steps he had to take in obedience. The army ended up winning, actually. He, they won by scaring the enemy away. They did this by pretending that there was more people, by making loud noises and scaring the Midians. When in reality, there was literally only 300 people. God used Gideon in spite of his limitations and the army in spite of their numbers. But God wouldn't have been able to do this without Gideon being obedient to him. Will you choose to walk in obedience? God will always meet you in the valleys. He will always walk beside you and you can do it. You can do it because of him, not because of your own talents or strengths. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 to 10 says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Walk confidently, for he has anointed you for such a time as this. Imagine how different your life could be if you just stepped out. And if you don't do something now, when will you? Just start today. Start going after God's call in your life. Learn to be obedient daily. Your calling isn't something you work towards it's something you walk daily in. Did you hear that? Your calling isn't something you work towards. It's something you walk daily in. Be obedient today because God is going to send you. Just like I was sent today to speak, even though I'm terrified of speaking, God will send you. But will you choose to flee from the enemy's lies? To fix your eyes on Jesus and to fight? I sure hope you do. And that is my message. Mic drop. Yeah, that is my message about facing your fears. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm not a preacher. I'm not perfect. And that's okay. Um, please like subscribe and comment down below and thank you jesus for everybody watching this video bye guys peace